Hi, my name's Ed Liu. I'm uh, from the Jackson Laboratory. And what uh, I'm going to be talking about is reading and writing uh, in, in genetic complexity uh, using a single model system, which is the mouse. I'd like to start with what I consider are fundamental truths uh, uh, that my talk will be based on. First of all, that the genome sequencing, particularly human genome sequencing, has uncovered thousands of plausible genetic effectors of disease. Many, uh, or if not most, of them are in regulatory regions, causing some issues around how you transfer that into a model system. The causal variants occur in combinations, so you're talking about combinatorics in a grand scale. And and expand that to the entire genome of different strains and species, and you have a genetic background problem of a multitude of variances uh, affecting the phenotypic outcomes. Um, most human diseases need to be modeled in a whole organism. It's quite clear that cells are fantastic and are important, but you can't model Alzheimer's disease in, uh, in a cell culture. It has to be recapitulated in an animal. Modeling genetic complexity is very hard. Every one of you in this audience knows that. And of course, we are very excited about the applications of CRISPR. At the Jackson Labs, we believe the mouse, ge the, the mouse genetics is the other half of human biology. And of course, there's been some criticisms of the mouse system. It's a failure of the mouse systems in the past because I believe there's inappropriate extrapolation of the mouse as the perfect model system for a human disease, and that's not true. One has to know the limitations of any model system. The modeling has been done frequently on the wrong mutation, uh, a genetic knockout instead of the human variants that are there. Um, modeling is in the wrong genetic background. We've all had that experience of a null phenotype in one uh, mouse strain that is uh, effective in the other. And, and when one tests these models, it's always on one genetic background and one mutation because of cost issues. And really, in, in, if one wants to transplant this concept of precise model systems, we have to have diversity of both the models as well as the mutations. One of the things we do at the Jackson Labs is to generate new model systems and new uh, systems for testing a variety of approaches. And one of them is actually using diversity strains, where we take eight founder mice and using very, um, very uh, um, uh, con controlled mating um, procedures, develop what, uh, in one case, collaborative crosses, where they're jumbled DNAs but become inbred species that have very specific rearrangements. The second is uh, diversity outcross, where we can almost outbreed these eight founder mice so that every mouse in a litter is completely different from the other. In this framework, um, the entire diversity is in about 45 million SNPs, 2 million indels, and it, uh, the variances are perhaps more than the difference between the Neanderthal and the human. And you can imagine the differences in phenotype that we uh, can do. But the Mouse Models 2.0 at the JAX is precise, diverse genetic models of any human disease, which follows this paradigm. We identify all mutations in a patient of a disease. We construct these mutations individually or in combinations in mice, but in this case, either sta in stable genetic background of a pure inbred strain or in highly variable genetic backgrounds like a DO and CC to then test the effects of the genetic background, which we can experimentally extract the uh, components uh, after um, post hoc. In these, then we do extensive phenotyping. We have just completed the construction of a $21 million phenotyping facility in Bar Harbor, and uh, extracting the cells, um, uh, individual progenitor cells, like from the brain or from the heart. We can actually uh, do scre drug screening in cells that we come back. Uh, back to the models and back to clinical trials. In a similar manner, in the genetic backgrounds, we can actually optimize the genetic models because of these modifiers that clearly change the phenotype, improve the stable genetic um, models that we have, and use these also for drug screening. I, I, you've seen many models, uh, many situations of modifiers having dramatic impact, but this is one uh, that was done by Greg Cox for spinal muscular atrophy with respiratory distress, which is a mutation in this immunoglobulin mu binding protein 2. Um, the mouse model for this um, gives you uh, 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 
a neuromuscular disorder with uh, motor muscle, motor neuron atrophy. As you can see here, the sciatic nerve is atrophied. But in a, a specific cross using uh, this, we find that it completely reversed the phenotype. Um, at at JAX, we have several of these um, of these approaches blocked into uh, a center for precision genetics, where we are looking at patient-specific models, um, specific models at, uh, attuned for the exact mutation uh, for the disease, the same mutation in genetic backgrounds, an Alzheimer's disease precision model center that we take candidate mutations from human sequencing and multiple mutations in combinations and aging those mice for a phenotype. And in Center for Genome Dynamics, the, the DO mice is used for super high resolution mapping of quantitative re relevant traits, relevant, uh, relevant traits such as uh, aging. Now, um, how do you go about doing this in the technologies? First of all, you can create mice with the same genetic uh, mutation in many different backgrounds. And in, in our laboratories, we've actually uh, uh, moved the technologies in a scaled manner by having electroporation of embryos so you can, uh, you don't, you can bypass the microinjection phase. The second, which I'll show you a few examples, are creating mouse models with many, many structural or regulatory variants using a system called Casilio, which is a combination of Cas9 and Pamilio. Pamilio is a, a, a RNA binding protein that has sequence specificity of binding um, that can be tuned because of the <coughs> combinations of re repetitive sequences that are there in the Pamilio proteins. By engineering that, we can produce a a trinary system of a Cas9, a guide RNA, and an effector um, that is uh, linked to the puff motifs that are there that uh, recognize very specific um, uh, binding uh, sites, binding, mo binding sequences in the guide RNA. One can then do multiplexing in a single cell of many different effectors, have multiplication to ex ex uh, expand, as well as develop complex formation with multiple uh, protein effectors. Um, in this manner, we've been able to create a few mice with multiple effectors that um, enhance, activate, and repress simultaneously to actually change the um, epigenetic code, as well as to actually label cells in multiple loci. Uh, just to give you an example, this is OC4, um, 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 OC4 and SOX2 simultaneously in a cell using uh, two guide RNAs and the various familial recognition sites. And you can see that um, activation of, of, of OC4 can occur only when there's a uh, when the when the OC4 guide RNA is there, um, at the same time we can actually uh, downregulate with a repressor in the same cells using a uh, SOX2 guide RNA locked onto a repressor, um, and you can put those two simultaneously together, and it's highly dependent on having the Pamilio uh, component. So, in with these kind of uh, tools, we're hoping to develop highly complex models of of mouse models of the human condition, even converting many of the loci to human-like uh, features. So thank you very much. Should we have question and answers afterwards or, or? Okay, sure. <laughs>